All right, now this is a this is a very special off air for me, bro. We've we've done we've done many, but this is like one that's real, extremely personal to me. And sitting down with you, Sam, bro, like for one, I got first of all, I got to thank you for your time, because I know this is not what you do. You know what I'm saying? And we had a chance, you know, just just off the phone, right. out of the limelight, man. You know. We have great conversations, 100%. And, and we treat each other as men and as human beings, bro. So, I know that your time is very precious. So, thank you for allowing me to come down here and sit with you, bro. One hundred percent, man. I, I appreciate you, you know, thinking to have me on the show, man. Sam, are you the oldest when it comes to yep. brothers and sisters? Yeah. All righty. And, and what's the breakdown? Um, I'm about what eighty-two. I'm three years older than my than my brother, and my sister. I'm like. Maybe like 10, 10, years. 10 years old, yeah. Was it, and just in the household, because like we grew up, man, it was seven of us as mm -hmm. far as kids. Single parent though, my mom took care, you know, took care of us. But, you know, we did everything in house. We didn't have 5,000 channels. Right. We didn't have money. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Was it kind of the same with you guys, just kind of in the household where you understood the family dynamic and, and were y'all always tight with each other? Yeah, yeah. 100%. I think, uh, me and my brother, we used to uh, sleep in the living room with my mom's, <laughs> yeah. in the same bed at my grandma's house. Like we didn't have a room, uh, so we was tight knit. You know, mom's on it, working, uh, making sure. And then she saved up some money and uh, bought a house like maybe two blocks down, mm -hmm. um, a couple more than two blocks on 60th Street, but really like five minutes drive from my grandma's house. So when. Uh, she moved out in, in, into her house. Then it was me, my mom, and my brother. Right. And then she had my sister. And then so now we in the household, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, little more struggle because it's mom's right. got yeah, bills man. and doing things on her own. But yeah, we was definitely, we had to make do. You and Nip had always been extremely close? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Same with like, like me and my brother, Mouse, man, we were, you know, I mean, if, if you saw one, you saw the other. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot that I learned from my older brothers. Like Keith was my brother that really introduced me to music. Mm -hmm. Like looking at notes and looking at credits and listening to certain sounds and not knowing that I was paying a tuition into the school of experience right. for the profession that I'm in now with loving music, knowing how to talk, knowing how to go beyond mm -hmm. what, what I'm listening to. So that was like kind of a, almost like a finishing school for me. Early on, did you know, and when you look back now, did you know that you were paying a lot of tuition into the school of experience with, you know, flipping quarters and, and making dollar shots and things of that nature? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, when, when we was going through it, definitely not. But I mm -hmm. think in hindsight, we both kind of, um, appreciated that we had to kind of like figure it out on our own and um, you know we gained that edge young so you know when we was in high school and then got out of high school we was able to just really get to it and adapt in a way that a lot of our friends that had were not able to so definitely um, in hindsight you know we always appreciate the struggle. I want to talk about also like like neighborhood Sam, mm -hmm. you know the 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 hustle part of you right, as right, well right. because you you know how they say man I'm my brother's keeper, yeah. that was that was you, right? Yeah. Early on, I think I think I was just um, you know, honestly speaking, man, I just tried to do my part, mm -hmm. um, hustle, you know, really a lot of the things that I got into or opportunities that I seen was from my bro, right? from little bro. Like, you know, he was always, um, you know, things were, he was sharp and he always seen opportunity. So we was always hustlers, but he would always come up with, and then we'd be like, huh, and then he'll put me on it. And then I just try to take it to, the, to, to, to my level that I could take it to and him also. So we was both, um, you know, we was both doing our thing. And I think for me, it was just, how can I add value and, you know, to speak on what you're talking about, music, he always had a love for music since he was young. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we would have money, he would just go and spend it all on, you know, Source magazines and this and, and buying CDs. And I'm like, bro, save your money. But that was his passion. And um, moving forward, when we get older, you know, 
when you when, when you don't have you 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 want to get money and you right, want right, to get right. to it, but it comes to a point when you're getting money. What's the next level? Yeah, and, you know what do you do with it? And I think he had the vision and he was like, "Look, this is what we're gonna do." Getting was money. Nip with you in the uh, when you were doing the CDs and DVDs and no. everything at a distance? And Nip was doing his thing. You know, right. he was um, he was hustling. He he was he was getting money a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. He he you know he put me up on that. That um, that CD thing, long time ago when he was in uh, when he was in high school, mm. he actually built a computer, young, with the burner in it, and was showing me. I was like, man, he's bringing backpacks full of uh, equipment. He stole uh, computer parts, <laughs> and then he bring it in the bedroom. We shared the bedroom. I'm like, bro, get this shit up out of here, man. I'm, I'm clean. I, I, I want my shit clean. Right. I'm like, get this junk out of here. I'm building a computer. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. You building a computer. <laughs> so. He built it, and that motherfucker was working, and then he stole a CD burner. He got one, and he put it in, and he showed me, and he, t and, uh, he came back, I think, one day from high school with like $300. And so this is the time I'm flipping burgers still. I'm making like 60, 70 a day. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I made 300 today, man. And I'm off like, of off the of CDs. CDs? Yeah, yeah. You know, all the news, he was telling me, I go to Napster, I'll get it before mm -hmm. it comes out. I got a list, then he showed me these lists. He like, I got another three, 400 orders that I'm burning today to get to school. So I was just, now I'm like, I'm like, all right, show me. And yeah. so now he showed me everything. And you know, That wasn't junk anymore, huh? Not junk, and, you know, yeah. he, at, at this point, he was he was still kind of shorter than me. So I'm like, all right, that's mine. Right. I took over the, <laughs> so he was mad, we arguing back you and forth. take over the enterprise? The, I'm taking over this burner for a minute, but no, I always joke and laugh, like, man, he, put, he put, any, any hustle we was ever on, me, everybody, our friends that we grew up with, you know, bro bro was the visionary and, and brought it and to the from team. from an early age. From an early age, man. Early age. Damn. I used to tell everybody this, but him also, when I first heard him write something, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, you wrote this? He like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, this is special. And so you know me, I'm like, shit, my brother wrote that, so I try to start trying to write some shit. <laughs> man, I'm writing for two weeks, and I just threw the shit away, I ain't got it, so I hey, always- Hey man, at certain points, did it feel like baby bro was leading big bro? No, 100%. Yeah. 100%, man, 100%. And you know, even since we was young, we always knew he was like special. And um, you know, it was always for the older brother, you know, you know, it's, uh, it's an honor that mm -hmm. my little brother is doing, you know, things that I can be proud of. Right. And um, just, you know, never failed, man, since we was little, just So always. you saw how special your bro, how, how special Nip was before the world knew how special he was. 100%, I think anybody at this time, a lot of people ask me this question, like, man, when did he? And I'd be telling them, it wasn't no when, it was always. Anybody that was around him from young, he was, he was certified gifted as a little kid. Anybody that was around him, his charisma, he, he always stood out. People always were like, no, this guy is special. Mm -hmm. From a little kid to junior high to high school to, you know, in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. the homies. Yeah. Everybody like, no, this dude is special. Everybody, you know, Nip, Nip led, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And people followed and, and, and respected and looked up to. Older, young, it didn't matter. They, they, they knew. Who tapped into the neighborhood first? Hustle. Oh, really? For sure, hustle. I, you know, I'm, I'm young. And I'm going to school in Watts before him. So as far as like knowing about hoods and, and gang LA culture, I was I, I was exposed to that first, going to Watts and going to school at Markham uh, outside of our neighborhood and what we saw. But once, you know, obviously Nip get older, Nip in our neighborhood, which I never wanted him to be a part of. Right. You know, honestly. You know, anybody, and I say this, anybody that, 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 that grow up and understand, you don't want your little bro being a part of, you know, some shit that you know is destructive. My goal was always, we got to get this bread and we got to get the money and we got to, you know, we, we, we need to make sure that we own. Were you always concerned when you start seeing him going down a certain path? Because you already know, man, like, dude, he's studious, he's reading books, he's building computers, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. And then there's always a time where we got some of this and some of that, you know, and he had this and he had that. Were you concerned when you saw Nip kind of getting in a lot more? Yeah, 100%. What would you tell him? Would you tell him, like, man, we got you got this music, or you got, or you just, he just wasn't listening? Um, I think at that point, we was all trying to get money. You know, Hustle was getting to the money, but at the same time, he was associating and hanging out and, you know, it's, 
I'm like full time, get the money, hustle right. is half and half. And you know, the other half could get, you know, get you, get you, you know, gone for a long time. So mm -hmm. that, that, that was a dynamic at that time. Um, once, one, once it, you know, transitioned into full time hustle, trying to do the music, um, that's where that, that's where I felt like okay, this is the opportunity, right. and this is and honestly, this is what now okay, whatever I can add to this, whatever I can help with in any way I wanna I wanna be there and support because this is this is the direction that I know. Number one, bro, is super talented. Mm -hmm. Like I tell him, like man, if you if you wasn't talented, bro, we I'd have told you like come on, man, let's let's do something else. This ain't gonna right. work. But you know, I, I full heartedly believe in. I know that this is, you know, this is this is some this is his calling, and this is something that's, you know, channeling channeling um, his energy in the correct in the correct way. Like, when did that start for you guys? When y'all started thinking, like, man, we wear T-shirts, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. we need to sell them. I think um, we was trying to get money, and um, you know, it was a lot going on, multiple arrests mm. uh, uh, for myself, and. Um, me and Fats, man, we was we was we was selling T-shirts, and then we had the weed on the low. But the main the main reason for us being in the parking lot <laughs> was like we're selling shirts, we right. selling T-shirts, boxers. So it kind of started off kind of as a front, honestly. Right. And then we would have the movies, we would have the weed. But when the police pull up, we like, man, it's T-shirts, and we start seeing the demand. Were y'all on the streets or y'all had brick and mortar at that? No, time? we was on the streets at this gotcha. time. Gotcha. Yeah, we was in front of Louisiana Fried Chicken. You know it well. Check cashing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All, all, <laughs> All the homies used to stay there and sell dope at the check cashing. <laughs> when everybody get their cash, Boom. they check cash. First person you see. And so now we there too. And so, you know, we would get people cashing checks. They would come spend with us. Uh, um, T-shirts. The homies would buy shirts. And we start noticing that we short stopping the swap meet. Mm. It's lost in swap meet. Yeah. We short stopping them now. Everybody coming buying their T-shirts from us. And um, it start turning into something. And we start selling out. Every day. Y'all just had tables out there? Yep, had yeah. a table, a trunk, and then we'd go from the trunk back and forth and um, turn that spot into a, a money spot also. And then police start coming and start right. seizing our is stuff. Is this after your DVDs? Yeah, this is, okay. this, this after that. So, Got you. you know, I couldn't go to that spot no more because it was done. <laughs> and so now I'm like, we need to find another spot. We got blessed and found this spot and it turned into something again. And obviously, same program. We there every day. Mm -hmm. I'm going, you know. Hustle, making his rounds, pulling up on us, chilling with us for a minute, going back, doing what he needed to do. He had spots, other spots everywhere. He was doing his music. And uh, Fats, I used to pull up, mm. knock on Fats' door. Hey, bro, come on, get him at six in the morning and we'll just be there, bleeding it till like 12 midnight, seven days a week. So when you see that you guys are brick and mortar, <laughs> things start going, that had to get, give you that bug of like, man, this is something that we can continue to do. Yeah. What did you learn early on when you go brick and mortar? Um, you know, we we was uh, we was no rules at that point. Mm, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we was hungry, we was thirsty, we was doing everything. We had fake Louis bags, we had <laughs> fake Lacoste shirts, we had the fake Nikes. Remember when the Jordans? Everybody had. We had everything in there, and, and you know, you know, we we was thinking it was never going to end. We was like, oh, this is crazy. We, we, we. The store ended up making damn near like four, five thousand a day. Just cause we was, we had right. the Jordans, we had the this, we had, the, it was just, you know, and then we get hit, you know, we get hit, we get hit hard too at this right. point. Uh, detectives, oh, shit. Uh, motion picture association come back on me right oh. there, uh, uh, 77 precinct. So they hit the shop, you know, it was, it was multiple, you know. You just saw different jackets. Just yeah. Reading it. like oh. <laughs> Yeah. I got stuck. That's, that's, that's what stuck me. That, 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 when they raided that, that got me stuck. I ended up, um, I was already out on joint suspension, had like five or six felony arrests that I was fighting. And then this one, they came in, probation department came with them. They raided like it was 40 different police officers and um, they got me. And, they, and so I ended up going and I didn't get out. I was in for like 22 months. Mm. And when I get out, the shop is gone. We yeah. lost the shop. So but it's almost two years later. Two years later. but. Hustle was doing, got signed, and Hustle was in New York, and Hustle, Hustle is in the magazines, and so my whole time in, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like, all right, I'm not, I'm not even tripping. It's meant to be. I, I was out for as much as I was needed to try to help as much as I could, and then now, bro, got it from here. 
Mm-hmm. And transition has happened. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I'm and just, you were getting word that that Nip was moving. Yeah, he's sending me. You know, I'm on the phone with them every day. I'm hearing about it. He's sending me mag- magazine articles. Um, you know, I'm listening to the radio. You know, I, I see the I see the music video, the first music video, Hustle in the House. Mm-hmm. Did you ever feel like like man, this is this is really happening? Not were you surprised by how big things were becoming, but did you always envision that either your little bro was going to be this guy, or did you always envision that there was something bigger for you guys together, or you couldn't see what this either was becoming or what it is now? I think um, definitely never, me personally, I never envisioned that, um, you know, it was gonna become, you know, where, where Hustle took it, I had no clue. But I always felt like uh, we was gonna be good because we was hustling. Mm-hmm. And we was, we was gonna, regardless, we were gonna have. That was the, for right. me, that was the thing, like, we wanna make sure we have, we wanna make sure the family got it. Got it. Like, Granny getting a new Jaguar. M- Mom's gotta get a Benz. Yeah. Pop's gotta get a, a BMW, you know, and, and get some jewelry. And, and y'all were able us, to do those things. Yeah, that was the that was the for us young growing up. That was like you made it. Yeah. So um, now when you in that you, reality hits, like okay, hold on, how do how this 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 can't last? How do we how do I legitimize or how do I what is the next level? Because it's nothing, you know, it's nothing. It's, it's the foundation of what we doing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't last when you right, when, when, right. when you're doing anything illegal or you're in the street. So, with that, I think Hustle had the vision, and Hustle was like, "Nah, this is what we're gonna do." And every time Hustle would lead the way, and I remember Hustle telling like, "This clothing, this clothing gonna be big. It's gonna be one of the biggest things we do." Watch. Hey man, I remember even the Smart Store when y'all opened up the Marathon Smart Store. Yep. I was like, "What the fuck is a Smart Store?" Yep. And early on, we used to be like, yeah, you can come in and you can point your phone at this. And I'm like, what? And then is it Idris? Yep. Idris? Idris Sandu. Yep. I remember, man, when he told us the story about how he met him, he said he was like, went to go get a green juice. And yep. Idris was in there and he said, man, I just kept walking past, bro. That he was doing something with his hands mm-hmm. and making things move. But even just to tap in to something like that so early, bro. Yep. When, and, and, and peep it and understand, man, this is the next thing. Mm-hmm. And now you see certain things now, man, like Nip was on before we had even had the scans where everything could just be scanned. Now everything is scanned like yep. that. And when you talk about a smart store, bro, nobody was thinking about that. Man, I'm gonna tell you a story, man. I, I, that, that, that goes to Hustle Genius. You know, we scrambling, trying to get the store open. And we did like a little mini dock and we got, made sure the store was filled up with clothes and we trying to, you know, fold them correctly and make sure it's clean. And we finally ready, probably like a week and a half before the grand opening, or maybe like two weeks. And we doing our countdown. And Hustle like, yeah, we, oh, man, I just met this guy at the Starbucks. I was going to get a tea or something and I seen him and I'm like, huh? He like, yeah, we about to um, make the store a smart store. So I'm like, what? I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't hey, got we time ready? for that. I don't even know what, like you say, I don't know what is the smart store. He's like, no, trust me, trust me, bro. So I'm pulling my hair out. I'm mad, like, man, what is this? And so I meet Idris and he's telling me this and I'm like, bro, we don't got time. And so we end up, he, he get it and he make everything. He go in and he integrate it with the clothing and, you know, geofence it. And then so I'm learning things that I had no clue about. And in hindsight, looking now, when that store opened and it was the first smart store. And that's why I just like, this yeah, is the hustle, the genius of hustle, man. And, so many different things like that he's done, um, but it's always you know driven from his vision, and he got the right vision. And you know to this day, people still talk about that smart story. Oh yeah, what made you guys want to like really do business and be a part of the community as well? I think um, you know instinctively that's the that 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 corner Crenshaw and Slauson. Mm-hmm. You know we used to walk from my mom's house to the bus stop on Crenshaw and Slauson in front of the shell. When we was little, and catch the bus to Watts, school bus. Um, there was a Shells, the gas station there, and I remember when we found out that the owner was a black man 
fucked us up. We was literally, we never thought like a black person could own a gas station. And so he was there and he would fuck with us. Like, what's up, man? What's up? He was cool. He, he, he coached basketball and um, he liked us because we used to go in there, backpack empty, no books, buy all the 25 cent ba uh, bags of hot Cheetos, fill the backpack up, go to school selling for 50 cents. And we used to come every day. Be like, man, y'all getting all the chips and no books. So he, he, he kind of took a liking to us, but that's when we thought, you know, ownership from right. back then. And fast forward, that parking lot behind the shell is where yeah. the shop is. Yeah. Hustle, we used to be in there um, hustling when it was an abandoned building. And then he sold his first mixtape in there. And then we were across the street hustling. And for us to be able to get the shop in that parking lot, it meant everything because we grew up yeah, in man. that parking lot, in that area. Um, and by us getting the shop, the community supported mm -hmm. young, old, people that may have looked at us and been like frowning upon us. At this time, like, man, I'm proud of y'all, man. Y'all got a business. And they made sure that they came and supported. So um, the significance of that area and being there and all the money that was spent with us, they saw what it was turning into. So mm -hmm. everybody from the aunties, the grandmas, you know, to the homies. Come and spending money, they seen we took it and we flipped it, and we took it and we flipped it, and they saw what the support, um, you know, what what we did with the support, and it was key for hustle that um, he stayed, and we opened the first marathon store there. Right there, because there was a lot going on, man. Police, you know, I'm going to jail, everybody going to jail, they raiding the shop. So at one point, it was, you know, like man, we need to get a shop on Fairfax. We mm -hmm. need to open this marathon store. Like, when we do the marathon store, it need to be somewhere where we ain't got to worry about this. You know, we get into it with the homies sometimes and you know, right. all type of stuff. We're like, we, we may need to do that, but Hustle was adamant like, nah, that's store number two. Store number one, we got to open up on Crenshaw and Slauson. Um, and I think, um, number one, it was because he wanted to inspire and wanted to show people like, nah, like, like I'm from this area and I'm doing something big here yeah, and yeah. I'm investing here. And number two, you know, it was an obligation because, you know, we was we, we, we was made and the brand was built from the people's support. What was that day like for you, bro? Would, and did you feel any prem premonitions before we lost Nip? No, 100%, man. I think, man, we just, uh, it's my cousin's birthday, so the night, I want to say the night before, it took us to uh, Wally's, Beverly Hills, me, Pops, um, and Adam, my cousin Adam, and uh, just had a long talk with bro, you know, not to get into too much detail, but it was a lot of big politics, getting into it with certain people, you know, Hustle had DJ Khaled in the hood. Not to be speaking too much on shit, but we came front line like we always do. And you know, niggas gonna know we gonna crash out behind it. Back, we not playing. Ain't nobody saying nothing to Khaled. Ain't nobody doing nothing to Khaled. And he's straight and hustle, frontline that. And um, you know, we felt like certain people didn't didn't like that. And um, did the video. Khaled got out of there perfect and smooth. And you know, we appreciated Khaled for the, for, for for showing up and coming to the hood and and, and doing the video. And um, you know. We, we we knew that this was gonna be one of them one of them ones one of them videos man hustle brought DJ Khaled to the hood and uh, you know had John Legend in, in, in the other scene so we at Wally's and we just chopping it up about a lot of shit man just you know making sure that we on point and security and when, when we pull up it's, you know we like hustle when you pull up to the shop call us he like bro I'm not calling you niggas. When I pull up, I'm not calling you niggas when I pull up and we like arguing and just, you know, but turn into, um, you know, a little bit of that. And then back to the, back to, back to the, um, you know, celebrating bro, uh, Adam birthday and hustle got us the back room and, you know, you know, uh, family there chopping it and, uh, just us four. And we stayed there forever, man. And when we, when he walked out, um, we all walked out the back room of Wally's. Uh, I think Rivera, one of the guys that filmed the video, just happened to be there. And so he see us walking out, he's like, oh, Hustle, what's up? And he's like, man, what's going on? He's like, bro, they just sent me the first edit of the video. 
And so he pulled it up and he, he like, man, look at this, bro. You look, you look amazing, bro. You about to do movies after this. Look at this shot. And so Hustle seen it and Hustle was smiling. Hustle was happy. He seen, he seen the shots of the, um, of the video. He was like, man, he's telling him like, bro, ain't no more, ain't, ain't no more uh, small time shit, man. After this, nigga, your shit going out the roof. And so, you know, we was all happy and shook hands with them and then we left. And um, that was the last, last interaction, bro. And that was the night before? The night before, Saturday. Sunday, what was that morning like for you, Sam? Sunday, um, it's a regular Sunday, man, I think. Uh, we had us, you know, we had spots in the hood. So one of the spots we saw, we had a little weed spots, 24 hour spot. And um, I think it was my boy uh, who usually do one of the shifts. I had to cover one of the shifts. And so um, I was in it, I think I was in it all night. And um, I end up, the morning shift came in, I ended up leaving. And so my goal was to go to the house and uh, sleep a couple hours and then go back to the shop and, fin and close the shop up for the rest of the night. So I'm at Granny's house, uh, sleep on the floor, and uh, this phone just going crazy, man. It woke me up, and I picked the phone up, and, and they, 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 you know, forget who called me, man. I just hear people screaming in the background, and they like, man, you know, bro got shot. So I just immediately just run out the house, and. Uh, Shut out the door. My grandma was in the in the living room watching TV, so she seen me run out. Didn't close the door. Just got in the car. My grandma's on Fifth in Slauson, so the shop is maybe like six blocks away. So I just ran every light, every stop sign, and I get there. And man, it's just going crazy, man. You know, everybody's screaming, and I just see bro, and I'm just, you know, it's fucked up, but bro still breathing. I think uh, Kev Mack was like talking to him and trying to uh, tell him, you know, breathe, stay, stay with, just breathe, bro. So I'm looking, trying to, uh, you know, we need to figure this shit out. So somebody had to, um, I think ambulance on the phone and everybody screaming. I was just like, man, shut the fuck up, man. It's just like, 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 you know, take the phone and I'm trying to talk to, to the ambulance. They say they come in and they telling me, you know, I'm asking them like, like what, what do we need to be doing? And so they um, telling me to try to administer CPR on bro. And, Asking me, is he breathing? I'm like, yeah, he's still breathing, you know. And uh, just trying to do the best that we could. And finally, you know, police came and ambulance came and um, they took him. And so I'm just praying, you know, I, you know, I had a lot, I had faith that uh, bro was gonna be all right. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of people shot in that parking lot. And we, you know, I done drove multiple people to the hospital and, you know, I'm like, man, if anybody make it, bro gonna make it for sure. Not what is the first thing that you do, man, but where, where's, where's headspace, man? Because it's hard to just not, you know, either throw it all away or, or give it all up. Right. You know, because we got nip as friend, music, whatever it may be. You know, y'all sharing bedrooms, that's, that's like me and my bro. Right. You know, at some point, do you feel like any of this is worth it or were you ready to throw it all away? Oh, no, nah, man. Not 100%, like, crash, crash out, broad daylight, whoever. And, you know, we start figuring out who, 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 who they, who the streets were saying it was and, you know, that's what the whole unit was like, we gonna, where, where's this nigga at? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was the mind space at that point. Yeah. Aside from just dealing with, you know, the reality, you know, but it was 
go time, man. Yeah. You know, they're going to make sure the kids is good, make sure his kids is good, and make sure <clears throat> we keep going. Is it as random as what the public thought it was? Like, Nip seen somebody, Eric, and talked and... I mean, uh, you know, he, are, he already got convicted, so... For me, without, without going into too many details, mm -hmm. somebody come to the shop. They know we in, we, we in the doorway. When Hustle pull up, we in the doorway. You're going to see me with a hoodie on, and I got a pistol on me. You're going to see one of, my, one of the team members in the hoodie, uh, uh, in the doorway with a pistol. That's protocol, when Hustle pull up. <clears throat> so it's Sunday. It's busy in there. Why, why, why the niggas in there didn't follow, follow the protocol? I wasn't there. Why they didn't follow it? Maybe they was fucking around helping the customer, doing some fucking customer service. This is what I'm thinking, trying to, you know, transition into some legitimate mm -hmm. selling clothes. But nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. And um, from my understanding, no boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene because he knows he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot. And um, had a conversation. Probably seen nobody was in the doorways. Checked hustle had on shorts. Checked everybody else. Left. They say came back with a red shirt on. Tiptoed through the alley and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. <clears throat> you can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when a nigga come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off or the Bloods did it or the Inglewood families did it or the BPS, that's the throw off, red shirt. So for me, he felt he was, supposed to, he, he, he was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever, and he was nervous. He was supposed to hit that alley with that red shirt immediately, but he didn't do that. He came in and he wanted to check the scene. He wanted to make sure he, 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 he wasn't getting into a shootout. And that's, that, that's, my, that's my thoughts on it. Do you still hear <laughs> Nip or any words? Yeah, 100%, man. I hear, you know, every every second, man, every day, 100%. Yep. Man, well, I know we're talking about the documentary that's coming, man. You know, the, the legacy. Yep. You know, I feel like, Sam, you've been protecting it so well. Thank and you. now, making sure that it didn't get into the wrong hands, that there's nothing goofy. You know, as much as, as we love Nip, there's nothing like brotherly love, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just to even get up every day is, I'm pretty sure at times it is, and I know it had to be extremely hard because I know what lost is too. Yep. And man, like bro, I really thank you for sitting down with us, man. Come on, thank you. You know, and I know, like I said, when we first started off, this is something that you do. Right. And it took me some time to even want to like, man, not even, oh, I need the interview, I need to sit down, but I just wanted to talk to you, you know? And I thank you for allowing me to sit with you and you to be this comfortable with me, bro. Come and, on. You know, on and off, we've had a chance to talk about you being comfortable. Nip loving what, what we do as well, man. And I want to be a part of preserving that legacy and continuing that legacy, man. And, and Sam, thank you for your time, bro. Come on, 100% big. You know, since day one, yeah, you know, you, you, you've been supporting Hustle, us. Uh, you know, we was little listening to you. So yeah, it's an honor man. and, you know, definitely Hustle loves you and had a lot of respect and uh, definitely appreciate you, all the support and, uh, you know, 100%. I'm honored to be, um, you know, on this on this with you, man. So thank, thank you, you bro. for sure. And I was talking about this box right here, man. Those boxes, when I flipped the box open right, and right. I saw that I was in the box. Right. Bro, I showed that shit to my wife, Sam, and I was like, 
I know there's a billion pictures. A billion pictures, bro. And to get in that box, man, is like, you can't tell me shit, bro. Come on, you part, you part of the story, man. You part of the history. Ribbon, yep. You know what I'm saying, yep. man? So yep. continue, bro. And you know you got my support and my love all the time, Sam. Come on, man. Definitely appreciate you, appreciate you always. You, my, being off air with me, bro. I appreciate and love you, man. Come on. Likewise, Thank you, man. Bro, Thank once you. Once again. Respect. All the time. Always.